Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Happy Wednesday and happy spring. Although it doesn't feel like it in Michigan right now, we are um, we are coming off one of our, I think one of our warmest winters we've had, um, least amount of snow we've ever had. And we are moving into spring with, uh, we woke up to snow on the ground this morning and we have a pretty big snowstorm, not huge, but big enough um, coming in Friday and so it feels more like April Fools but we're not quite there yet um, so yeah we are not done with winter yet here um, I am so glad you're here today and welcome to all the new people um, for those of you who are new um, I am Renee I am a wife a mom a grandma and I have been in this crazy fiber world for about 20 years now um, what started off as a passion for making yarn has turned into um, raising my own animals and uh, learning more and more each and every year that I do this. There is still so much I want to learn and uh, so many things that I can learn, um, even within the realm of I do raise Angora rabbits, I raise Angora goats, um, and even in, within that that just those two worlds. There is so much I still want to learn. I have actually been raising Angora rabbits for, um, I have to look back. I was trying to remember this morning if it was, I thought it was 2005 that I got my first rabbits. Um, so it has been almost 20 years. Um, but I don't know for sure. I have to look back at my old blog to see when I actually got my first two rabbits. Um, it was December of 2004, 2005, somewhere around there. So just about 20 years. Um, and I have been doing it ever since. Um, I have not gone without rabbits in that whole time. I've always had some some kind of a collection of rabbits. Um, I'm also a Spinolution wheel dealer. And um, yeah, I do all the spinning things and I like to teach. Um, one of those ways that is most convenient for me to teach is through YouTube. So I appreciate you all being here. Um, let's hop into our talk for today. I am working on a series I did, um, and Willow is here with me. If you can't hear her, she, she is sit. She is always right next to me. Um, but there's a reason why she's right next to me today. I think you can see. <laughs> um, I started a series last week on uh, the Angor rabbit and the breeds that I have and just talking about very specifics of the breed. And so today I am um, going to introduce a new to me rabbit, literally like I just picked her up yesterday. Um, and I have never had one of these. And so this is brand new to me. So I'm really going to use my notes today. Uh, I have been doing some research and stuff. Essentially, when you talk about Angor rabbits, they are all, um, they're all fiber animals, but they all have their unique uh, differences. And so I am going to be talking about satin Angoras today. Um, and so, yeah, in the 20 years or almost 20 years that I've done this, I have never owned a satin angora. Um, I don't know why. I think it's probably because I have always been looking for production rabbits um, rather than show rabbits. And for production, the satin isn't the highest, um, the highest amount that you can get from an angora rabbit in regards to fiber. And so I've never really looked into them. But... Uh, as I have, I'm getting deeper and deeper into this journey um, and talking about them and the opportunity actually came up through a Facebook page um, that I connected with another breeder here in, in mid Michigan. She's 30 minutes from me. And so she had posted that she had some satins for sale and I decided to take the opportunity and get myself one. Um, I am so glad I did. Um, let me show her to you before Willow has a heart attack here. And she actually doesn't have a name yet. Um, I have a few ideas, but I haven't named her yet. Maybe you guys can help me. But isn't she beautiful? She is, uh, I don't know. She has a lot of crimp to her fiber. I don't know if you can see that on camera. 
I was laughing at myself this morning because somebody um, on a YouTube channel said on film and they're like, how old am I? We don't do film anymore. And I had said that in one of my previous videos and I didn't correct myself because that's exactly what I was thinking was, oh my goodness, how old am I that I would say the word film instead of camera? Um, so she has gorgeous fiber uh, and she has some great cramp. She does have a nice, she's looking down. She's very sweet. <laughs> um, she has a very nice body type, but the person I bought her from is actually, she is a show person, which I am not. Um, please don't ask me any show questions. I really have very little knowledge of show rabbits. At this point, um, I should do an interview with my daughter-in-law who used to show rabbits, not Angora's, but she was a very good um, rabbit uh, she was third in the nation at one point with rabbits. Um, I can't remember what she had, maybe lots or something, mini lots. So I should get her on here and do an interview with her talking about show, um, showing rabbits and things like that. Maybe I'll, I'll do that at one of these points because I'm not the person to ask. Um, I keep thinking one of these days I probably need to jump into that world at least a little bit, but the the gal I bought her from yesterday was showing me um, her body type, which is a nice, rounded, compact body type, um, and how she is trying to breed out a specific, I think she wants them to be all the same size going down where hers go in at their bums. Um, she wants it to be more rounded, I think she said, and so she's specifically breeding for that, um, which is a whole nother fascinating world. Willow, go away. Oh, Willow. I might have to put her away. We'll see. She, she is just, she wants all the babies. Um, breeding for specific um, features and things like that. I am actually doing an interview, which I've already mentioned, with Stephanie from Rabbitry and Yarns tomorrow, which should, if I do everything right, this will be my first um, Zoom interview. So if I do everything right, we should have a nice long interview with her and she is actually breeding for a new specific type of Angora. And so we're going to talk about that. Um, and so that's a long process when you think about trying to breed certain specific characteristics into or out of a rabbit. It takes a lot of time and a lot of bunnies. Um, but we'll talk about that more tomorrow. Let's jump into the Satin Angora. And again, I am learning this right along with you today. Um, this is my first one. Let's, before I get too deep, I don't know if I mentioned this in my last video. The ARBA, the American Rabbit Breeders Association, acknowledges or recognizes four different Angoras when you're talking about showing them. Um, they recognize English, French, um, Giant, and Satin. Um, I do not have any Giants right now. In the past, I have had a giant German cross. That was many years ago when I was first starting this out. Um, I had one, but I have never owned a giant Angora. Um, I am, I'm sure I could get a hold of one somewhere around here, um, but I do have German Angoras, which we're gonna talk about that breed in another video. So those are the four that are recognized by the American Rabbit Breeders Association. Um, the satin angoras come from breeding a satin rabbit with a French angora. So that's how they got this breed. If I'm understanding it right, it came about in the 1930s when um, a gentleman had bred for this specific breed and then he decided to stop breeding because he could not get um, a good length on the fiber, I think is what I read. And then in 1980s, a Canadian woman um, finally came out with a long um, satiny coat. And that's kind of when the breed, I think 1988 is when the breed was finally recognized. Um, so they typically live seven to 12 years. Um, they range an adult rabbit ranges anywhere from six and a half to nine and a half pounds. She is eight weeks old. I don't know if I said that. I think I told somebody yesterday 12. I don't know why I said that, but she's only eight weeks old. Um, she is pedigree 
and so um, she is still considered a junior um, rabbit and I think those ran from three and a half to four and a half or five for um, juniors and of course the bucks and the does are different too but on average it's about six and a half to nine and a half pounds um, they are the only breed that have a sheen or a glisten you can kind of see it as I pet her with the sunlight coming through um, a sheen or glisten to their fiber and their fiber is finer and softer than any of the Angora breed um, so they have the finest softest wool the thing I was most excited about with her I've talked about this before where I have French and English black Angora rabbits but essentially it, the black is in their face so they have a very dark face but their fiber gets very diluted and it turns into just a gray color whether that be light or dark but they're still considered a black rabbit and that's what you're going to get when you get French or English I was super excited to see her in pictures and then see her in person yesterday and then to see her mama who is also very very black um, so she's gonna keep this color which is super exciting to me because I have never had this dark of um, fiber on my black rabbits uh, because I've only had French and English um, if I understand it right the the color and if I mess any of this up please if any of you are familiar with satin angoras please let me know in the comments um, but if I understand it right their color range is not as wide as like the other angoras um, they're more basic colors but they are very vibrant which you can see in in her color um, it's just beautiful <laughs> um, and kind of the sciency thing behind that that I read is it's a recessive gene and I am reading this because I can't remember all this um, that causes the casing around the hair shaft the pigment in the hair shaft to be translucent instead of opaque um, and it also the gene also causes the diameter of the hair shaft to be smaller than any of the um, other angoras so that's why you get such a beautiful color the other thing with satin which I said at the beginning of this video the reason I've never really jumped into them is because you only get on average you're only gonna get about a half a pound of fiber from each rabbit they don't have if you're looking for a production rabbit this probably isn't the way to go um, and so you're there's less bang for your buck when you're talking about grooming and everything else if you're looking for very specific colors though like the black this this may be a route you take with at least a few of them which I'm super excited I may end up I have been looking my colors over the last few years um, as I, I kind of dwindled down about eight years ago to about six rabbits and have recently built my my herd or my rabbitry back up um, and I am looking for more of those colors so I have the whites and I have the chestnuts um, I have reds now but I am looking for more color in my um, in my rabbitry and so this is going to be a nice way to add that although I won't get a ton of yarn from this so um, maybe a couple more of these will be on my to-do list coming up I don't know we'll see how she does she is extremely sweet though just sitting here um, like I said I just picked her up yesterday um, so because of all of the fine fiber it does mat a little bit easier or yes does mat a little bit easier and it's going to be easier to felt so that will be the things that you have to watch with the satin angora in regards to keeping them groomed um, and keeping them mat free um, and I read in a little article or something that I was reading this morning that breeders are still trying to um, work on increasing the yield of their fiber uh, I don't know it didn't go into great detail how they're doing that but again that trying to breed in something or out something of the rabbit takes a lot of time to do that so you're looking for very specific 
things, um, whether it be body type or fiber type. Um, again, we'll talk more with Stephanie about that tomorrow, but that's essentially what they're trying to do. Um, let's see, did I touch on everything? I think so. I think that was the basic basis of this breed. Um, like I said, I'm super excited and I do have her, um, she is not in a cage. She is in one of my indoor spaces, um, <laughs> my indoor uh, play pens, I call them. Um, I have her in one of those and she's doing really well. Um, she's eating, drinking, she's um, acclimating really well. So she's got quite a bit of space. And, um, yeah, so we'll see. I debated on putting her out with my other four females out in the colony and decided against it just because those four are pretty bonded right now. Um, Willow, she's going to end up tipping over my chair. Oh, no, Maggie wants in the mix. It's like chaos around here. Um, if you could only see Willow's face, she is very intent. So, I hope that this video um, helps. I hope you guys got some of your questions answered about the Santa Angoras. And if I missed something, please let me know. Um, I am, uh, I love to read your comments and I try to respond to all of them. Um, but yeah, so this is a new addition and I am hoping we will see, I haven't groomed her yet, Willow. Come here, move, move. Thank you. I haven't groomed her yet. Um, and I I don't think she has been groomed yet um, at all. So she's got kind of that baby fuzz still. Um, you could see her undercoat is a little bit lighter, but it's still much darker than any of my black French or English Angoras that I've ever had. So um, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I hope you learned something today, and I hope you get to create something today. Bye.